getting pretty fresh in here, mate. Did you leave the hatch open? No, we didn't be, mate. Ah, shit. Is she fucked? Ah, uh, it's nothing major. They just hit the radio. G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to War Thunder with Mags and welcome to War Thunder Ground Forces. Today we're going to be driving out a couple of vehicles over the course of this battle and our first up is the M4A1 Sherman. This is a rank 2 battle rating 3.3 tank with a 75mm M3 cannon that can carry a maximum of 90 rounds. It carries a 12.7mm M2 HB machine gun with 600 rounds as a secondary weapon and a 7.62mm M1919 A4 machine gun with 3000 rounds in addition to the 127 now the M4A1 is a pretty common tank, so I'll just run over this quickly. Hull armor, 50mm on the front, 38 on the sides and rear, 76mm on the front of the turret, 50 in the sides, 50 on the rear. Basically, you do not want to get shot too often in this tank, you want to try and hide yourself as best as you possibly can. Now the 75mm M3 cannon is often criticised by War Thunder players as being, well, just a really, really bad gun. It's actually not. It's perfectly fine at 3.3. It performs really well. The problem with the 75mm is when you start trying to drag it into battle rating 5 battles. That's where you run into problems. Thankfully, you don't have to worry about that with this tank. So, from the moment of spawning, I've made a beeline up the north side of the road to get to these rocks, and I'm straight away getting shots from incoming German vehicles. First target is a Panzer 4G, and I've just put one straight through the front plate. We've done a bit of damage here. He's tried to move the tank to cover. Second shot in, and there he is out. Panzer 4G, very important first kill. That is, well, at this battle rating, that may as well be a Tiger. That is one of the most dangerous tanks you'll find on the enemy team, and we've taken them out before he's had a chance to kill anyone. So he is now completely gone from the match. So we've got one player down already. Now at this point, I'm still scanning for targets, and I thought I saw movement behind the wreck over there that is uh, sitting in between those rocks, but it turns out I just actually wasted a shot. However, it does look like there is a tank a little bit further up, but it's probably a little out of my range. There's also one moving in the bushes. So, first shot out, and we run a little short on that, so I need to adjust. Now, the good part about the 3.3 Sherman is it is very quick to reload. Another shot down range, and again, still not quite there on the aim. I'd actually been driving British tanks just before this one, so I was adjusting aim for British guns. And there we go, straight through, and it's a little Panzer 35T. Not a particularly impressive kill on that one, it's more of a, um, he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Now, to scanning the horizon here, this is the one area that I can be approached from dangerously. Parking in this position is actually really good. Most of the tanks advancing face my front angle. My left hand side and rear is covered by the rock, so my flank is covered there. My right hand side is covered nicely as well. However, directly from the front across towards their spawn is exposed. If somebody comes across that position, I can be shot straight through the front plate. Now I've got another target here lining up, and we need to elevate the gun a little. And the target is a martyr straight through the front plate. We take out the transmission, so that's immobilized for the moment. So just a quick adjustment and fire again. Martyr taken out. Now that's a far more important target. Very light on armor, incredibly dangerous gun. Martyrs can cause all sorts of problems. Now we were, from the looks of things, trying to cap there, but uh, it looks like it's been interrupted. Now seeing as there are tanks out in front of us at the moment that are freely moving around and don't appear to be being engaged, and it looks like I've got no more targets here, I decide it's time to start advancing up. So first step is to get to this next rock. And I am paying attention to my left hand side here. We've got some pillars of smoke, so obviously there have been some tanks taken out in that direction, and I'm not being shot at. So at the moment I make the assumption that I'm pretty safe, and this is actually where I mess it up. Now the tank in front of me at the moment is now on fire. It's taken a hit, but I didn't see where the shot came from. Now I'm assuming it was being shot from in front. That's why I'm scanning. After all, if there were hostiles to my left, I would have been shot moving between the rocks. It was a really bad assumption to make, which is why when I moved out into the open field here, I was killing myself. Three of the enemy's top players are actually on the left-hand flank at the moment. One of them has been taken out, which was the smoke pillar. The other three were all waiting for tanks to try and cross the open field. We take one shot from an angle here, and then we're going to take two from the tree line. Now I'm trying to angle the tank here at this point in time to try and defend myself a little bit, but it's not enough. There are three different angles there, and there was no way to angle between all three, and these are Panzer F2s, their gun is going to cut through the front of a Sherman like butter angled or not. So, yeah, I killed myself. 
So that's my first tank down, but thankfully I am not out of this match just yet. This is the SB2C1C Helldiver, rank 2 battle rating 3.3. This is an aircraft that I normally don't like for realistic battles, or at least not realistic air battles. It's just not that great an attack aircraft. However, in realistic ground battles, this thing is absolutely magnificent. It comes with a default bomb loadout of two 500 pound ANM64A1 bombs. Honestly, I don't find these bombs particularly impressive. Uh, it's part of the problem with trying to use this in realistic air battles. The way they drop just seems wrong in comparison to other dive bombers, so it's actually really hard to get these bombs on target. And unless you get them within 5 to 10 meters of, say, a Panzer IV F2, you won't even do shrapnel damage to it, let alone kill it. You are more likely to kill yourself with these bombs than you are to actually take out a hostile tank. However, the selling point of the Helldiver is not the two 500 bombs it comes with stock. It's the two 20mm AN M2 cannons that it comes with. 400 rounds of ammunition total, so 200 rounds per gun, and its ground target belt and even its omnipurpose belt will rip through tank armor like it's made of butter. So that's what I'm doing now, just clearing the bombs out of the bay to lighten the load and increase the maneuverability of the aircraft. If I'm lucky, I'll get lucky with the bombs and take something out. If I don't, I'm not really concerned. I just want the extra maneuverability and the extra speed so I can start going to town with the guns. Now, you can't actually take the bombs off the aircraft as stock. If that was an option, I wouldn't fly into battle with them in the first place. So, with the bombs now cleared, we roll it over, and we have a Panzer F2 ahead. And there we go, we had a Panzer F2, first target eliminated. Now, I am paying attention at this point. The German team does have one aircraft up. However, it is a Dornier 217. Not particularly concerned about it at the moment, so I'm just keeping an eye, or more to the point, an ear out for it, and just continuing to strafe targets. No reason to worry about an aircraft until there's a reason to worry about it. And with that, there is our second kill. Another Marta 3 and its fantastic gun removed from the enemy team, so that clears it up. Now these guys, you'll notice I'm working the south side of the road near the cap circle. I'm trying to clear out the guys defending cap at the moment. We've managed to decap the enemy team, but they keep destroying our capping tanks. So if I can eliminate the defenders on this ridge line and somebody can get into that cap circle, I can keep them defended. So next target is up, and once again, short burst, and there is kill number three for the Helldiver. Only a Panzer 3B this time, much lighter on the armor, not a particularly impressive tank to take a kill out of, but it's another tank that was moving in to defend that cap circle. So at this point we have somebody who's managed to flank around, it looks like he's trying to, well, camp the enemy spawn, basically. We've got an A26 that looks to be doing the same. At the moment we don't appear to have anybody moving on the cap circle, which is frustrating, although there is one tank moving down the road, however he looks more like he's looking for a fight. And at this point I'm looking around for more targets. Now with nobody over near the cap circle, now I'm going to start swinging wide and look for vehicles on the ridge line, where I got taken out in the Sherman earlier on. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like I'm going to have too much luck over there. There's a lot of explosions and a lot of smoke trails, so it looks like the team has gone up and managed to take out those attackers. And then I take some really close shots there. Nothing actually hits, but the trace of fire is very, very, very close. There's a AAA truck somewhere down in there, and I didn't spot it on my initial pass. So, once again, looking back out through the distance, looking to see if there's any more hostile tanks that I can find. Being unable to locate anything, I begin my turn back and I'm going to go looking for that AAA vehicle. Now it's actually reasonably important that this thing gets taken out. At battle rating 3.3, AAA trucks are incredibly dangerous. So I can see the tracer fire ahead, and I make another mistake here. So I saw the tracer fire, but it didn't actually locate the point of origin. So I'm making an assumption that I know that the enemy vehicle is inside the tree line. But of course it's not. I fly directly over the top of it, take one in the belly, destroys my control surfaces and my control authority, and into the ground I go. Thankfully I have another vehicle. This is the M4A3 105HV SS Sherman. Again, rank 2, battle rating 3.3, but this time we're armed with a 105mm M4 howitzer with 66 shots maximum, and again we have the same 12.7 and 7.62 as on the earlier Sherman. Now despite the 105mm gun mounted in the turret, the turret itself is mostly the same, with 76mm on the front, 50 to the sides and 50 to the rear. However, the hull armour is adjusted slightly on this tank. It's still 38 on the sides and rear, but we're now up to 63mm on the front, which gives it a little bit more bounce factor 
better when you've got it angled correctly in combat. So the 105mm gun comes with two flavours of ammunition. We have standard HE and we have high explosive anti-tank. Now, I tend to find the heat rounds are not overly effective on this vehicle. Unless you happen to run into something with an incredibly large amount of armor, they tend to just punch a hole through the tanks and not do anything. So I do carry some on board just in case, but my standard go-to ammunition is just standard HE. Now, it can be hit and miss. The 105mm gun is not particularly big. It used to be a monster back in the day when HE was severely overperforming, but now, Sometimes you can hit a tank and you'll wreck half its internal modules. The very next round you fire, it'll detonate on the hull and do nothing when shooting exactly the same point. As a result, I tend to find the effectiveness of this tank a little hit and miss. However, when it does work, it works very well. And the one thing it's very good for, and I like to, the reason why I like to keep it in my lineup, is it's very good at an end push on the cap, which is what I'm doing now. The high explosive, well, even if it doesn't take out the enemy tanks, having a 105mm high explosive round slam into the front of your tank tends to convince enemies to not be there anymore. And as you can see, 105 hit the bottom plate, damaged the right-hand side track, but not enough to destroy it, did nothing else to the vehicle. Now, the enemy target here in question is, of course, a Marta, so we're not talking about a huge amount of armor here, and we get a second shot into the front plate. Again, detonation. The explosion from the HE was enough to detonate the fuel tank next to the Marta, but not enough to actually do anything significant to the Marta itself. Now, unfortunately, my third shot here goes a little bit higher. We actually shoot over the top. I was trying to hit the crew compartment in the back section of the Marta now that the fuel tank's out of the way. No love, and the Marta pulls back. However, we do have another tank into the area that comes through and pops the Marta. So with that clear, and with a German plane flying over the top of us, keeping an eye on exactly what's going on, it's time for us to actually move in and start trying to cap this base. But first, we need to see about enemy targets moving into the area. Now once again, just putting a shot over the top of that wreck up on the left-hand side, I just want to make sure there's nothing up and behind it. I do know there were some tanks working the roadway, and they will definitely be heading in our direction now as we're starting to cap the enemy circle. So that's my goal at the moment. I'm going to try and slot into the cap circle just behind this building here, and I want to angle myself for tanks approaching from the front, and we can see there's definitely shots coming from that ridge line, but with the increased armor on the front of this tank, we're able to take a hit, and able to quickly put one back in return, and the HE ricochets off the underside of the tank. That's unfortunate. If that shell had detonated there, I probably would have one-shot that tank, but just no detonation on the shell. So we'll drop an artillery, I'm going to try and put another shell up over that ridge line and try and convince our sniper here to go back. And I want to keep myself angled in this direction, but I need to keep checking what's going on to my left as well. And make sure nobody approaches around that side. So just peeking over the top of the buildings here, looking to see whether or not I've got any movement. I just want to make sure... My goal here isn't to try and kill the enemy so much as convince them to not come into the cap circle, to not interrupt me in my cap. I want to end this battle at this point. Alright, just over a quarter of the way through the cap at this point. I'm still looking to check. And here comes an artillery strike. Now, that means somebody is at least within artillery strike range to begin with. Otherwise, they wouldn't be able to deploy this, of course. But with the first strikes not actually happening on my position, they're happening over to the left-hand side, I expect that they don't actually know where I am in this circle, and they're just dropping the artillery close to the center and hoping that it hits something. In which case, there's actually no reason for me to move. Now, those hits there weren't actually artillery. That was an enemy aircraft trying to put holes through my top deck. I'm not entirely sure what they were firing, because if they were firing 20mm with ground target ammo, they should have gotten through the top deck of the Sherman, but they did absolutely nothing. So again, no reason for me to pay any attention to them. Three quarters of the way through the A-cap at this point, and I am still continuing to look for targets, and we take a hit from the right. We have a sneaky panzer that's gone around the side. Thankfully, while the damage was critical, it was not catastrophic. Managed to return fire and do about the same amount of damage in return. That did look like it killed the commander and possibly the gunner. Definitely did some damage inside the tank. But at this point, it doesn't matter. I quickly drop a artillery strike because I can, but with cap circle covered, we win.
All right, so the results of this match. We came in first place for the team with six kills, one base capture and two deaths. Tank Rescuer, Ground Forces Rescuer, Professional X2, Shadow Strike Streak X4, Multi Strike X2, The Best Squad, and Heavy Metal Fury. 25,020 Silver Lions, but only 386 vehicle research because I'm using a rank 2 vehicle to research a rank 5 vehicle. Uh, this is also without a premium account. This would have been 3,535 base RP should I have had the premium. Battle time was 17 minutes. So, overall the results here were pretty reasonable, however, I clearly made a couple of big mistakes with my vehicles, at least my first two. My first big mistake was, well obviously, assuming that my left hand side was clear and not taking the time to double check exactly what was going on. My second big mistake was not eyeballing the target and still making an attack run over an area especially knowing that the target that I was going for happened to be an anti-aircraft vehicle. In both these cases, I was asking for deaths. The third tank did well, but honestly, I'm not a fan of that particular Sherman. I think I would have done a hell of a lot better and actually possibly made a few more kills as a result of that if that last vehicle had actually been an M22 Locust or really any other 3.3 to 2.3 battle rating vehicle in the US lineup. I just don't find the HVSS all that effective. Anyways, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching. Please remember to leave a comment in the comment section down below and as always, click like if you do, subscribe if you want to see more, fly smart, fly safe, and I'll catch you in the skies.